Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chloe. I'm a recent graduate of UCLA with a double major in art history and Egyptology and a master's in Egyptology. And I make videos all about navigating post-grad life, um, trying to make it in a creative field, my interest in arts and education. And sometimes I talk about the things that are interesting me, like the books I've been reading. Oh, that's upside down. Um, so today I thought I'd do a book review of The Whole Picture, The Colonial Story of the Ardenor Museums and Why We Need to Talk About It by Alice Proctor. I read this for book club through the studio membership, through the Curated Career Co. And we already had our book club discussion and we all had lots and lots of thoughts. And I have lots and lots of thoughts about this book. So let's get into it. Okay, I think it's important to establish some background before I go into what it's about, my thoughts on it, um, and whether I think people should read it or not. First up, um, I have taken a lot of museum studies classes and a lot of my um, background in museum studies was through a professor who very much taught from a post-colonial criticism lens, um, being somebody who studies ancient Egypt and how a lot of those objects have been looted and stolen from Egypt, ended up in European collections. This is something that um, is very important for me to learn about, to talk about, to be aware of. There's a lot of conversations going on about repatriation, colonial problems of our museum institutions, racist backgrounds of many of them, most of them, a lot of things like that. So this is a really heavy topic to delve into. This book definitely is for a public audience. So something that I could see sold at a museum bookstore that a lay person who's not an academic could pick up, read, and understand a lot of um, the content. So a lot of this book in a way was review from a lot of stuff that I have learned in classes, but in a very accessible way. But let's talk about Alice Proctor. She is, she does mention this, white British woman and she also does not work in a museum. Her thing is she started um, these tours that she'd go into um, the British Museum and museums in London and they're called uncomfortable tours and so she kind of tries to decolonize as she says these art museums. My biggest criticism and most people's criticism in my discussions with them is that there are many other scholars who um, have been writing about stuff like this in the academic world that are not white Westerners and it could have been a real opportunity for them to write about this. And this is very much a, probably a discussion about the publishing industry as well, about who gets the book deals. Um, but her background I think really caused some problems in her slipping into what she's trying to deconstruct. So I will say I really do commend Alice Proctor for trying to take a topic like this on. Um, her whole thing is trying to deconstruct how we understand the objects in our museums, how they ended up there, how for example um, the East uh, India Company used a lot of art as propaganda to justify their takeover of India. And she tries to break that down or breaking down um, tattooed Maori skulls and how they were highly valued collectible items of the British that they would bring back and it caused a lot of problems and she tries to discuss, take on the ethics around 
displaying human remains that have been stolen and removed from the cultural context and things like this. Um, so it's a lot to take on and it's a very important topic that I wish there was more public dialogue about, but um, unfortunately, because of her background, it's pretty shallow in a lot of those discussions. And it was such an opportunity to partner with people who are experiencing or advocating for these issues. And it feels like she should not have been the one discussing them. For example, the section on Maori skulls, there are so many, and she does cite indigenous Maori people who are arguing for repatriation of their ancestral uh, sacred objects um, and they're left out of the discussion and rather it really reinforces this British colonial well we have them and there's a problem but eh, and she really doesn't delve a lot into um, what do we do about this? And yes, there's a lot, maybe it's too much to handle, but I feel like um, somebody else should have written this book or it should have been an edited volume. That there's so many stories that are left out. She also covers um, everything from, you know, museums in New Zealand and England and the US and it's clear she hasn't visited some of them. Like she has a whole thing where she talks about just the display of the casket of Emmett Till that is at the Smithsonian African American History and Culture Museum um, that I have been to. And we discussed this in book club, how um, somebody who works there has seen how the guards who are up against the public who want to take pictures and the family of Emmett Till asked for there not to be uh, pictures taken have a lot of anger directed at them and that isn't considered when um, you're having these discussions about displaying these objects and she just delves into some areas that um, if you haven't been there and she has some opinions on things that it just don't think should be said. The structure of this book was really hard for me. She breaks it down by types of museums and uses objects as case studies. And in that, it very much feels like it would be good in a tour setting, um, but it was not good in book setting. It was overwhelming and caused for a lack of depth and glossing over of things. and. For example, she used um, portrait galleries as an example of holding up white British colonial narrative. Um, but instead of writing about the lack of narrative, she focused it around white abolitionists in England, which it just, there were things like that where she just slips into this narrative and I don't want to be too harsh against her, but I think if you're, it's a good starting point if you're interested in these topics, but you definitely, it's a book that you have to go into with, I think, some awareness of those pitfalls and be willing to do further reading because otherwise I think it just perpetuates a lot of the problems that we're dealing with. I, I don't know what, you know, the editing side was like, the publisher side, you know, I'm not going to put all the blame on the author themselves, but I'm going to say if you uh, are in the museum field already and aware, it's an interesting read, um, but I would caution those who want to learn more about picking it up um about how they think about it when they approach it that you have to read it with a critical eye i think um and look for bias in it um yeah
that's my thoughts on this. I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. Sorry, this was a downer of a book review. Um, I'm gonna give it like three stars, one for effort, and then like two for overall. Um, I hope this was helpful. I really don't know how to structure these videos. Um, so let me know if you like these and are interested in seeing more. Those were my thoughts. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.